Hey folks, it's Marvin Cash, the host of the Articulate Fly, and we're back with another Southwest Virginia Fishing Report with Matt Riley of Matt Riley Fly Fishing. How you doing, Matt? I'm doing great, Marvin. How are you? Just trying to stay out of trouble. Did you uh, wash away last week? No, no. We, uh, well, fortunately, I was out of town for the weekend, and we had our, our uh, gully washer on Sunday, but... Um, we, we did get a fair amount of rain. You know, I think about an inch is, is sort of the average of what fell across the region, but, um, it hasn't, hasn't put things out too bad. I mean, the, the new river came up a good bit. Um, and it, uh, the lower river is not dirty. Um, it's, it's still fishable, um, just a little on the high side and then, uh, the upper river is pretty dirty and, and coming down, it'll be another week or so before it's decently clear, but you know, so not a long term sidelining. Um, and then the trout streams are in as good a shape as, as ever. They were actually starting to get kind of low, um, before the rain last week. So we're, we're back up to about a perfect level now. So really helped us out there. Got it. So I would imagine kind of the landscape is, Small mouth fishing, winding down, probably done. Trout are super happy, and the muskie are starting to get happy. Yeah. Um, so I have, as a, I've got a couple of small mouth trips left, um, but I'm not not really booking any more for this year. Um, and then, yeah, trout fishing's been great. Um, the terrestrial action's kind of starting to die down, but we still have been been able to catch them on dry flies and uh, you know here and there. Um, particularly when the water was low, you know, rolling with a dry dropper rig or something like that, you know, they'll eat the dry fly about 50% of the time. Um, anyway, and then the musky fishing, I mean, things have been, you know, like I said, before the rain, even on the new things were pretty dang clear. Um, but the musky were pretty fired up the last couple of weeks. I mean, we saw a lot of action, um, the days that we were on the water and, uh, you know, my hope is is that, that that continues, but we've got this little bit of rain, you know, bumps the bumps the clarity a little bit, so it you know, it, it, it might be a little it might have a little bit more of an edge than, you know, making eye contact with, with fish at the side of the boat when they roll up to a figure eight or something like that. It just makes it a heck of a lot easier to have a little bit of color in the water. Um clear conditions are good for seeing fish and feeling good about yourself, but when uh, when it's really really clear, it can be can be tough, and you kind of have to um, try to improvise and try to get fish to eat away from the boat and that kind of thing. So, a little bit of color coming this week will be a good thing, and and hopefully it'll stay uh, stay as hot as it has been. Well, that's great, and you know, on the trout front for your dry flies, you know, are you finding is it the yellow and orange thing that's working really well? Yep, yep, the yellow orange things. Uh, you know, whatever that might be, attract your dry flies in, in all different shapes and sizes have been working just fine. Um, there's a handful of, of uh, you know, like smaller cream-colored mayflies out there. We call White Cahill. Um, and, but, you know, not really enough of them to be significant to a fish, and they'll eat a stimulator or, you know, hopper or humpy or something like that. Um, just as well, and they and they float better and they're easier to see. So that's that's kind of what I've been rolling with, just like all summer. And like I said, it's starting to slow down a little bit now. Um, but you know, with with low water conditions, I'll just even if I'm not expecting a fish to eat it, I'll still roll with that kind of a dry fly as an indicator. And uh, if they eat it, good. And and I know that they'll continue to do so. Um, but if they don't, then it's just a lot stealthier way to, to fish a nymph in, in low, clear water. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, folks, we love questions on the Articulate Fly. You can email them to us. You can send them to us on Facebook or Instagram. If we read your question, I'll send you some Articulate Fly swag, and you'll get into the drawing uh, for some cool stuff Matt's going to put together at the end of the season. And we got to keep the streak alive, Matt, and you got to let me know what you're writing for the rural Virginian this week. Yeah, this, this week is kind of more of a general – interest outdoor um column but it's uh just talking about uh fall foliage and you know everybody knows what it is and sees it and it's 
really starting to, to take off where I am in Southwest Virginia now and particularly up in the higher elevations. But they're just talking about why exactly leaves do change color and, uh, and, and sort of what goes into that and, and, uh, how conditions impact those colors and all that kind of thing. So, um, something that I guess some people don't always think about and it's sort of a cool little science thing right under everybody's nose. Yeah. Well, super cool too, right? Cause fall came a little bit early this year. So we kind of need to think about that stuff again, right? <laughs> it, it did. It did. I mean, it, it got cold a couple of weeks ago here and we keep, keep uh, warming up a little bit and then sliding back into it. I mean, today we, when I got my truck this morning to head to the river, it was 65 degrees you know, around six o'clock. And, uh, I think, uh, Friday night supposed to be back down in the thirties. So one of these, uh, one of these swings, it's going to stay down there and we're going to be in the fall, fall swing for good. So it's, uh, it's definitely here. Well, there you go. Do you have any squirrel hunting uh, on tap? <laughs> I, yeah. Um, I've, I've a couple of the days that I've reserved over the last couple of weeks to, you know, at this point and after running hard for several months, all my, all my stuff is falling apart, you know, replacing ropes and straps and all that kind of good stuff. I, I try to take a day to do that. And, uh, usually I don't want to do that and I want to go do something else. And, but thankfully it's been a little windy for squirrel hunting. Um, all those days I've reserved for myself. So I've had to stick to my to-do list, but one of these days I'm going to, going to get out there and, and, uh, get a few. Well, there you go. Well, listen, folks, it's a great time of the year to be outdoors. Uh, enjoy this cool weather. Enjoy the trout bite. And, um, you know, Matt, before I let you hop, why don't you let folks know where they can uh, can reach you so they can get on your muskie calendar? Yeah, uh, the website is mattreillyplotfishing.com. And that's really the best, best place to go for all the information, my phone number and email and all that good stuff's on there. So, however you feel best reaching out i look forward to hearing from you sounds like a plan well folks get out there and catch a few tight lines everybody tight lines matt all right thanks martin <laughs>